वेलकम टू इपीजी पाठशाला डियर स्टूडेंट्स ई एम डाक्टर अलखमणि प्रोफेसर अंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट आफ् ट्रेड अंड इंटलक्चुअल प्रापर्टी सेंटर फर् अग्रिकलचरल अंड रूरल डेवलपमेंट स्टडी तमिलना अग्रिकलर यूनिवर्सिटी कोयमूर् टुडे वी विल सी अबउट द एक्सपोर्ट अंड इंपोर्ट आफ फुड ग्लोबल ट्रेड हाज एक्सपैंडेड रैपिडली आल ओवर द वर्ल्ड एक्सपेषली आफ्टर द फार्मेशन आफ द डब्ल्यू टी ओ इन द इयर नयटी नयटी फै The demand for food is increasing due to growth of the population, low production in certain countries due to various reasons such as drought, flood, outbreak of pests and disease, war, etc. Moreover, there is a awareness about the quality of the food globally. Many developing countries, if you take before the Green Revolution, that is in mid 1960s, they have imported food, but after that only we started. Aiming at to increase the food production, especially developing nations achieved self-sufficiency. In the domestic production also, they have met their sufficiency, and also there is a surplus. They have exported. Almost all the developing countries are having the food production as their main occupation. Most of the people's livelihood is agriculture. and in general if you take trade between developing and developed nations are very high compared to trade among the developing nations farming in developed countries are heavily subsidized and hence the cost of production per unit is found to be very low this results in low international price this is a problem for the countries especially developing countries they could not able to compete with developed nations in the international trade then what is a policy policy is relating to the guidelines instructions relating to export and import policies play a major role in export of any commodity policy incentives enable the exporters to earn profit food items include food grains fruits vegetables pulses oil seeds milk milk products egg meat and also processed items primary agriculture commodities are exported from many countries global trade has expanded rapidly all over the world especially after the formation of the wto in the year 1995 the demand for food is increasing due to growth of the population low production in certain countries due to various reasons such as drought flood outbreak of pests and disease war etc moreover there is a awareness about the quality of the food globally many developing countries if you take before the green revolution that is in mid 1960s they have imported food but after that only we started aiming at to increase the food production especially developing nations achieved self sufficiency in the domestic production also they have met their sufficiency and also there is a surplus they have exported almost all the developing countries are having the food production as their main occupation most of the people's livelihood is agriculture and in general if you take trade between developing and developed nations are very high compared to trade among the developing nations farming in developed countries are heavily subsidized and hence the cost of production per unit is found to be very low this results in low international price this is a problem for the countries especially developing countries they could not able to compete with developed nations in the international trade then what is a policy policy is relating to the guidelines instructions relating to export and import policies play a major role in export of any commodity policy incentives enable the exporters to earn profit food items include food grains fruits vegetables pulses oil seeds milk milk products egg meat and also processed items primary agriculture commodities are exported from many countries countries like india exports foods such as basmati rice non basmati rice maize fruits vegetables onions spices tea coffee and also imports pulses oil seeds that are not sufficiently produced in the country export import policy includes decision taken by the government to export 
various items and control of imports. It also creates environment for export establishing laboratories for export for testing the foods that are to be exported, encouraging entrepreneurs to set units, duty exemption, loans and advances for trade and trainings. DBT that is technical barriers to trade and trade barriers are being reduced. Removed quantitative restrictions, shortly we say it is QRs, then special economic zones are created. Policy also aims to develop export potential through value addition of various commodities. We all know food quality is very important in the context of human and animal life, environmental safety, prevention of diseases. Hence, Food Safety and Standards Authority of India 2006 Act was passed. Shortly we say FSSAI. At international level, SPS, sanitary and phytosanitary measures are imposed which has major impact on export and import and also in the manufacturing and logistic sector in handling the produces during the production and after production. Standards are introduced for various food products, institutions and laboratories are established to check and test the quality standards. GAP, good agriculture practices are introduced in the production of agriculture commodities at farm level. GMP, good manufacturing practices are introduced in production and processing of various food items at industry level. For packing materials, quality, type, hygienic conditions are introduced. European countries are expecting the higher standards, especially biodegradable packing materials. In many developing countries, EIC, Export Inspection Council, has been established to ensure the quality of the food products exported. Health certificates are also issued based on the requirements of the importing countries. Quality is tested and certificates are issued. Food legislation, it includes acts, regulations and requirements, procedures prescribed by the government relating to export of foodstuffs to meet the requirements of the importing country while encouraging the conditions for fair trade. Trade policies have to be supported by domestic policies to foster innovation and international competitiveness. Already in the introduction I told because of the support given to the exporters, the international price is found to be less. Developing nations could not compete in the international market. Then coming to the WTO agreement and food policy, in 1990s, due to globalization, many countries opened their economy for international trade. Tariffs are reduced, quantitative restrictions are removed in order to increase the trade between the countries. At international level, trade and tariffs are regulated by the WTO. Previously, International policies and national policies are regulated by GATT, General Agreement on Tariff and Trade. There are 164 member nations for the WTO. They have signed various agreements relating to the trade, including the agreements for food quality standards. It influences the trade policies and promotional measures of the member countries. You all know WTO is one of the United Nations organizations. It is established in the year 1995. The headquarters is located at Geneva, Switzerland. Coming to the Indian side, Indian strategies, especially in the international trade, there are two types. One is inward looking strategy, another one is a outward looking strategy. Outward looking means it is a export oriented growth. Till 1991, India followed the inward oriented policy of trade mainly to conserve foreign exchange and also import substitution is the major strategy adopted by the Indian government. Outward looking strategy that is export led growth involves encouraging exports by providing incentives rather than restrictions to import. Indian export import policy shortly we say it is a exim policy. It contains various policy related decisions 
taken by the Indian government in the fear of that is in the areas of the foreign trade with respect to export and import especially they promote export and also suggested various measures and policies procedures relating to that trade policy it is prepared by the government of India that is central government it is coming under the ministry of commerce India's export import policy is also known as foreign trade policy in general it aims to developing export potential improving export performance encouraging foreign trade and creating favorable balance of payment position you all know the trade balance play a major role in the balance of payment Balan balance of payment indicate the strength of the nation coming to the main objectives of the exim policy of india to accelerate the economy from low level of economic activities to high level of economic activities by making it a globally oriented vibrant economy and order to derive maximum benefits from expanding global market opportunities the second objective is to stimulate sustained economic growth by providing access to raw materials intermediate components consumables capital goods required for increasing the production the next one is to enhance the techno local strength and efficiency of indian agriculture industry and services thereby improving their competitiveness to generate new employment is another objective to provide opportunities and encouraging attainment of internationally accepted standards of quality to provide quality consumer products at reasonable price these are the major objectives of the trade policy of the india then coming to the history of the exim policy in the year 9297 in order to liberalize the imports and boost exports government of india for the first time introduced the indian exim policy in april 1st 1992 it is believed to be an important step towards the economic reforms of india in order to bring stability and continuity the export import policy was made for the year of 5 years once in 5 years exim policy is prepared then coming to the next policy that is 97 2002 five years again this policy has further simplified the procedures and reduce the number of documents required for export nearly half import has been further liberalized and better efforts have been made to promote indian exports in international trade then coming to the india's foreign trade policy it was earlier called as exim policy that is export import policy it is governed by the foreign trade development and regulation act already said it is prepared for the 5 years whenever necessary depending upon the situation prevailing in the country it is amended within the 5 years period for example minimum export price for onion is fixed you all know the price of the onion is fluctuating depends upon the production in the country hence the government in order to protect the farmers the government fixed minimum export price mep for onion exporters are allowed to export at mep or above if the international price is less than that onion cannot be exported however when the domestic production has increased mep of onion has been reduced to allow export of onion when the country faced the deficit of production of onion that resulted in domestic price hike even it has reached the 100 rupees per kg then nafed is allowed to import it is a government organization that is marketing federation for agriculture commodities through the federation only onion is imported in order to stabilize the domestic price in india then for sugar cane sugar export india issues ad hoc prohibitions on export of sensitive products not only sugar but also wheat and pulses coming to the export that is to export any items from india iec export import code is a must it is issued by the director general of foreign trade 
exporters have to obtain the necessary certificates from concerned authorities for the commodities proposed to be exported. So, it is one of the main document necessary for any exporters. Then they have to comply that is exporter have to comply with the terms and conditions and the notifications issued by the government relating to export of commodities and also quality aspects then and there. The next export licensing exports from India are free for certain items and it is regulated by the foreign trade policy that is FTP for export of restricted items export licensing is necessary it is also issued by the director general of foreign trade mainly for the food safety aspect and security reasons restrictions are import, imposed for food items then another document is compulsory export certification it is gradually introduced for marine dairy egg products poultry products then what is the reason many of the diseases pests may pass on to another country if the certificates are not issued based on the health aspect or without any pest and disease it has to be sent to other countries before introduction of the compulsory certification for exports most processing units they are not implementing good manufacturing practices good, good hygienic practices that is ghp and hacccp however due to the mandatory of the system introduced they have also implemented the good quality production systems and it now it is obvious everybody is following the hygienic practices including the raw materials they also control the production they also give training to the persons working in the manufacturing unit finally now they could be able to achieve the quality aspects in the manufactured commodities so wherever the compulsory export certification has been introduced now the production is the quality aspect especially is matching the best in the world then coming to the apeda that is agricultural processed food products export development authority it was established by the government of india in the year 1985 by passing the act apeda act exporters have to registered with apeda for export of notified commodities and processed food items it regulates exports and implements various export promotions of the government of india coming to the food imports you all know that food quality is very important for any food items now all the countries are aware of it government is taking efforts to ensure quality to be traded both domestically and in the international market so food safety and standards act is passed import of all edible food products including tea for the domestic sale and also for the manufacturers fss act and rules are introduced in the, in the year 2016 it is revised and food safety standards authority they have issued some guidelines and it is published after that it is implemented and public awareness is created also in many places quality and packaging requirements as per the act the quality and packaging specified for the food items have to be followed then coming to the self life of the product as per the fssa act the products having a valid self life of not less than 60% of its original life are allowed to import suppose the original life self life is 100 days at least the remaining life period should be 60 days then only we can go for import then coming to the meat and meat products including the poultry products besides to satisfying the packaging requirements labeling and quality standards meat and poultry products shall be required to meet the sanitary and hygienic requirements as stipulated under the act and rules there under animal based food items are considered as high risk items for import to india coming to the packaged products all such packaged products which are subject to provisions of the legal metrology that is 
packaged commodities rules 2011 when packed produced sold in domestic market it shall be subject to complaints of all the provisions of the rules when imported into india beef and beef products or any products containing the beef beef in any form and produce containing beef in any form are prohibited for imports accordingly all consignments of edible oils and processed food products imported in bulk shall carry a declaration from the concerned exporter on the shipping document that the consignments does not contain beef in any form that is declaration i am saying in the packaging document they have to give the consignments does not contain beef in any form all consignments of edible products imported in consumer packs shall carry the declaration on the label the product does not contain beef in any form then having seen about the beef and beef products we will see about the sanitary import permit import of meat and meat products of all kinds shall be subjected to the sanitary import permit it is issued by the department of animal husbandry and dairying government of india as per the section 3a of livestock importation act 1898 and later it is amended in the year 2001 and it is also amended depends on the necessity from time to time food import clearance process for importers prerequisites the documents and undertakings by the importers are given mandatory documents are import export code that is iec code that is obtained from director general of foreign trade and import license from fs sai then country of origin certificates these two are mandatory documents then coming to the remaining documents wherever is whichever is applicable for the particular commodity it has to be submitted complete certification of analysis including safety parameters from country of origin this is mandatory for preparatory food then high sea sales agreement bill of lading mentioned in the bill of entry boe for sea consignment then ingredients list specimen copy of the label declaration that bill of entry boe has not been referred to se declaration is required to be in company's letterhead then examination order transit countries if the food article is passing from more than one countries then transit countries list if food articles is transshipped then invoice and performa invoice packing list self declaration documents having seen about the some of the documents which should to be included wherever necessary then coming to the self declaration document as applicable it has to be submitted that is undertaken from importers for issue of provisional noc no objection certificate for imported food consignments with less than 7 days of shelf life for issue of provisional noc for frozen and chilled imported food consignment for imported food consignment meant for display purpose in the trade fair and exhibition for imported food consignment meant for personal use for imported food consignment meant for research and development purposes for imported food consignment meant for sports events then imported consignment containing bulk packages but not having representative samples for imported consignment containing bulk packages and having representative samples for imported food consignment meant 100% export and re-export purpose so these are the 20 documents listed but it has to be adopted or submitted depends upon the commodity they wish import then coming to the procedure for import of food articles bill of entry boe is filed at customs ice gate on single window interface for facilitating trade that is swift single window interface for facilitating trade it is working on risk based sampling system called as risk management system rms 
RMS scrut scrutinizes the application and if the sampling is required then BOE is referred to FSSAI on online food import clearance system online food import clearance system FICS then CHA custom house agent or importer needs to be registered on FICS through the website that is www.ics.fssai.government.in FSSAI accepts BOE and may ask for further details from custom house agent CHA and importer if necessary. If all the relevant information is provided, the authorized officer fixes appointment for the inspection of the consignment. Only two opportunities are given to the CHA or importer to confirm the appointment. On inspection, if everything is found satisfactory, including labeling and packaging requirements for the consignment, the samples are drawn to numbers and if not, AO rejects the consignment and issues NCR that is non-conforming report. Samples are drawn then sent to FSSAI notified food laboratory. If the sample is found conforming, then no objection certificate that is NOC is generated and if not conforming, NCR is generated rejecting the clearance of food consignment. If food importer is not agreed with the finding of the laboratory report, then they can apply for retesting at the referral laboratory. Outcome of the result will determine the fact of the consignment. They may present a review application to the review officer that is director imports along with the required documents at the FSS AI headquarters. The order passed by the review officer can be challenged before the CEO FSS AI whose decision thereupon will be the final. So having seen about the procedures on quality aspects and for the import of food items we will see some of the major highlights of the food trade policy that is foreign trade policy of the India latest one 2015 and 2020. Licensing of food importers and food business operators. In addition to the FBO license requirement for food importers, importers shall also registered with the DGFT, Director General of Foreign Trade and possess a valid IEC code, import export code. Then compliance of the self life of the product. If an imported item reflects a self life with less than 7 days, the authorized officer as per schedule 2 shall take the sample products and issue provisional no objection certificate to the customs authority without waiting for the analysis report. The lab analysis will be communicated to the customs along with the NOC if the products conform to the standards. In case of non-conformity of the sample, the authorized officer will immediately inform the importer or CHA to recall the consignment and submit a compliance report within 24 hours to FSSAI. Once this step occurs, FSIs will issue alerts to the officials at the port of entry to watch for the product in question and similar products manufactured by the company. Then coming to the risk based food import clearance. FSSI may adopt a risk-based framework and a risk-based inspection process for clearing imported food products. It is also proposed by FSSAI to introduce pre-arrival document review PADR for regulating the imports that is before the arrival of the product the documents can be inspected. The risk-based criteria once operational will improvise the sampling procedure. The next plants, animals, seeds regulation of import into India. In the order 1989, all primary agriculture products will be subject to a biosecurity, sanitary and phytosanitary import permit to be issued by the It is coming under the Ministry of Agriculture, Department of Agriculture and Cooperation as per the conditions of fruits 
plants seeds regulation of import in india order 1989 the permit will be based on import risk analysis of the product it is conducted based on the scientific principles uh, it also in accordance with the wto agreements on the application of the sps sanitary and phytosanitary measures the import risk analysis will be conducted based upon the principles the type of pest known to be what are the items to be tested based on the scientific principle means the type of pest known to be associated with the particular pro product in the exporting country the organisms already established in india and the potential impact of such organisms on india's international trade these three will be checked support to food export in india's foreign trade policy 2015 and 20 Merchandise exports from India scheme MEIS it is the name by combining the earlier schemes that is five different schemes FTP that is focus product schemes market linked focus product scheme focus market scheme agriculture infrastructure incentive script VKGUY for rewarding merchandise exports which had varying conditions attached to their use notified goods exported to notified markets would be rewarded on a realized fob means fair on board value basis products supported under meis higher rewards have been granted for the following category that is agricultural and village industry products value added and packaged products then market support is given for most of the agriculture commodities across the globe by indian government industrial and other products supported in traditional and emerging markets only then high potential products not supported earlier in this policy 850 to tariff lines that fit in the production criteria or product criteria but not provided support in the earlier foreign trade policy such as fruits vegetables dairy products oil mills oils and herbal products paper and paper boards are given priority then global support has been granted to fruits vegetables flowers tea coffee spices cereals preparation shellac essential oils and processed items women centric products supported under meis it includes 203 lines which is fall under the category of tea coffee spices cashew and manufacture of other products status holders are given based upon the transaction or value of commodities exported it is given the star status for example status category starts from 1 to 5 star then based upon the value it is given you see that is 1 star means fob fob value in terms of us dollar million if it is 3 million dollars one star status will be given and if it is 25 two star status 100 million dollars three star then 500 million means it is four star then 2000 million dollar means five star status then what is the use of the star status this is mainly to encourage the exporters to set export more of the commodity let me conclude with what are the policies which affect the export and import of food trade in the international trade world trade organization plays a major role especially for smooth conduct of the trade that is they negotiate tariffs and trade among the signatories of the world trade organizations in developing countries agriculture plays a major role and major part of the population depending on agriculture and they produce food for the domestic consumption and also for the export of the commodities food policies play a major role to encourage the exporters to earn more profit by sending the quality products quality means it includes without any adulteration safeguard measures and also sps sanitary and phytosanitary measures play a major role quality is not only concerned with domestic production it also concerned with the international trade many of the countries now interested in the traceability of the commodities traceability means from where 
the quality the commodity is exported hence export certification is mandatory for export of many items depends upon the country's demand export certificates are issued and also hygienic certificates depending upon the quality pesticide residue level certificates are issued packing materials also should be in quality aspect hence they have to follow the quality packing materials so those who want to export good quality products without any blemishes in the product they have to register with the apeda apeda gives the export promotion schemes benefits to the exporters so it is necessary for the exporters to send good quality products otherwise it will be returned the quarantine plays a major role with this i conclude thank you very much